Hello everybody, it's Tortoise Investing coming at you today with three dividend stocks that you can buy and hold forever. Now as always, I will be showing off my portfolio for you. I will never hide this behind anything. I will be completely transparent with it. And today we are going to be using Qualtrum Insights to do stock analysis. So if that sounds awesome to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Those two things are super free, super easy to do, and it helps me out a ton. So stick with me here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Avi, Canadian Pacific Railway, and Bank OZK. And before that, let's go ahead and take a look at my portfolio. We are up 14 0.16% year to date. This is how the allocations are looking right now. Uh, S&P 500 is up 9.67, so we are doing pretty good if I do say so myself. I'm going to take a look at the holdings tab here, unrealized gains. So extra space storage and Hershey are still the ones that are beaten up pretty badly. Um, I may look to DCA down in some of these, but I'm kind of happy with my position sizes at the moment. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing, but I do know that I like to keep my portfolio condensed. I don't like to have a whole lot of holdings. Less is more because I can accumulate focus on share count than just overall total shares. But let's go ahead and take a look at Avi, this is a healthcare stock. I got a healthcare stock, an industrial, and a financial bank stock for you today. So just a free cash flow yield of 9.64%. We got a dividend yield of 4.39%. That payout ratio is not correct. Uh, I think Avi is around 50, 60% area. Um, but if you look here, it was in the 160s. And had a big drop, and then it tried to fight back into the 150s, and it dropped back down to 141. So I thought this might be a great entry point for some of you. As always, do your own research and stuff. Now this is financial advice. So revenue, revenue has been increasing at a rate of 12% over the last 10 years. Free cash flow has been increasing at a rate of 14.97% over the last 10 years. Uh, they have some debt, $59 billion. Their EBITDA is $26.58 billion. Uh, my rule of thumb is I try to find companies that don't have more than three times their EBITDA in debt because, you know, it's a healthy financial sheet in my eyes. Um, but, yeah, uh, EPS, grown at a rate of 7% over the last 10 years. And we take a look at the dividend. The dividend's been increasing at a rate of 13.98% over the last 10 years but have slowed down here recently, you know, over the last five years, 5% in this last, uh, 9% in the last hike coming in around 5%. So still inflation beating, so not bad. And the return on capital employed, 16, 16.58%. So still pretty strong there. Next up, Canadian Pacific Railway. Uh, free cash flow yield of 3.31%. Again, I'm pretty sure that this is not right. Uh, dividend yield 0.78% and payout ratio of 23.6%. So they are down pretty big. They were in the 80s at one point, down to 70, 97. I think this dipped below 70 there for a minute. Uh, revenue, revenue has been increasing at a rate of 4.46% over the last 10 years. The free cash flow has been going up crazily, 30.53% over the last 10 years. That is what you like to see. I like to see double-digit free cash flow growth over a 10-year period, and this is absolutely doing that. Uh, debt, they do have a little bit more debt. If you look at the quarterly here, uh, $21.76 billion. They did do a big acquisition of, a, I think it's Kansas City Railway. So that's going to open up a revenue stream for them and lead to future growth, which you know is worth it. It's going to be awesome for them going forward. Uh, EPS grown at a rate of 21% over the last 10 years, and take a look at the dividend. Dividend 7.49% over the last 10 years. It's kind of you know up down all around, uh, but I think that has something to do with the currency conversion with uh, it being a, can a, a Canada a Canada stock. Uh, but they uh, did issue more shares to do the acquisition. I'm pretty sure that mixed in with some of the debt is what they had to do. But besides that, um, you know, issuing back more shares is going to hurt the return on capital employed. I feel once they start working on this and getting that, you know, 
chop back down. The return on capital employed is going to go right back to where it was, if not even higher. This was hovering around 14, 15%, which is pretty good. Uh, your, you know, your average is around nine to ten percent. So, yeah, again, pretty strong stock in my eyes. And next up, Bank OZK. I know a lot of people are afraid of banks. <clears throat> a lot of people have a lot of fear when it comes to financials and stuff. You know, recessions right around the corner. But this one is unique as it increases its dividend every quarter. And I, was, I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. Again, you can look into it more. Um, adjusted free cash for the old 19.41%. It's just ridiculous. Dividend yield 4.21%. Dividend payout ratio of 20 six percent so this was at one point flirting with the 50s area down to 3581 um again might be a good entry point for someone that's looking for a bank stock if this is you know your cup of tea revenue revenue has been increasing every 21.76 percent over the last 10 years the free cash flow has been increasing already 16.29 percent over the last five years uh eps 15.23% over the last 10 years. Very nice. They have more cash than debt on hand, which is beautiful. And they are chopping at that share count. If we take a look here, um, beginning of 2020, they were at 129 million shares outstanding. And as of last quarter, 114. So they are definitely chopping at it, which is something that you always want your companies to be doing. You always want to be seeing that. But like I said, they increase their dividend every quarter, which is very, very unique for a company to do. Uh, the last company that I remember that did something very similar to this was American Tower Corporation, uh, AMT, the cell phone tower REIT. But yeah, as you see there, just quarter to quarter, it's going up, usually a penny, penny and a half at times. But really good growth, 13.42% dividend increase over the last 10 years. They are maintaining double-digit growth by doing that. So, I mean, the payout ratio is not terrible. Dividend yield's not unreasonably high. Like, I, I think this is pretty strong. They've got a really good-looking uh, balance sheet. But, yeah, those are three dividend stocks that you can buy and hold forever. I hope that you've enjoyed that. Again, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. And until next time, see you.